what's going on with IOST? Is it worth considering? Hi there, my name is Guy and in this video I'm going to give you everything that you need to know about the project. Before jumping in though, you need to know that we don't accept payments for our reviews and we don't wait for any mandate. We do our research and present our views for your educational purposes only. It goes without saying that I'm not your financial advisor and so this should not be interpreted as financial advice. Finally, if this is your first time here, then you may want to quickly hit up that subscribe button. It's a great way to keep up to date with the latest and greatest in the crypto space. So with all of that out of the way, let's get right back to IOST. IOST stands for the Internet of Services Token, and the project is focused on a central issue for many blockchains, scalability. In fact, it's such a large concern that there are already a plethora of projects that are attempting to develop their own scaling solutions. It was launched back in 2018 as an alternative to Ethereum that could also be used for building decentralized applications, that's dApps. The team has some pretty ambitious goals for the project, and with the release of their mainnet earlier this year, they are closer to realizing them. However, with so many alternatives currently in the blockchain space, what makes IOST different? Let's start by taking a look at their technology. The first and most important component of IOST has to be their sharding-based approach. This is the process whereby data is broken up into numerous shards and evenly distributed throughout the network. I won't go into the exact mechanics of how it works, but if you're interested, you can always read our complete guide to sharding below. What's most important to understand about sharding is that it could drastically increase transaction throughput and reduce blockchain bloat. Of course, sharding is not unique to IOST and it is also being pushed by other projects. However, IOST uses efficient distributed sharding, which incorporates a number of innovations such as distributed random protocol and atomics. If you want to read more about these sharding innovations, then you can read our complete IOST review in the description below. Now, another really important component of the IOST protocol has to be their proof of believability consensus method. With this mechanism, nodes are validated based on past contributions and behavioral patterns. This system also incorporates a fairness algorithm that randomly distributes data to various nodes in order to help guarantee a fairly decentralized blockchain protocol. And finally, to combat bloat that arises from all nodes storing the blockchain, IOST uses a microstate block generation protocol, essentially pruning the blockchain where only block header information is stored. Now, if any of this has confused you, then don't worry, our complete review covers it all. Moving on though, let's take a look at their utility token. IOST is the token that is powering the network and will have a number of use cases. It will be used as a medium of exchange, a factor in a node's believability score, as well as being used for dApp execution and deployment. These tokens were initially issued on the Ethereum blockchain as ERC20 tokens, but have subsequently moved to a native token with the recent mainnet launch. You can easily swap the ERC20 variant for these. Unlike many projects built on Ethereum, IOST did not have a crowd sale ICO. The team minted the entire 21 million token supply and sold 40% of that in a private sale. In terms of price, the tokens hit the exchanges on the tail end of the 2018 bull run. However, they were felled in the ensuing bear market that engulfed the whole of the ecosystem. Anyways, let price be as it may. I want to actually look into the broader IOST project. The IOST team consists of over 30 members that are spread across Asia and North America. The core team has some pretty impressive resumes that include a Forbes 30 under 30, a National Olympiad, a serial entrepreneur, and numerous other roles. There's also an impressive list of companies and VCs that have backed the project, including the likes of Huobi, FBG Capital, and Sequoia Capital. Something that I did find quite encouraging about the team was the level of development work that was taking place. Just pop on over to their GitHub repository if you want a fuller picture. So then, what do the markets look like for IOST? The token is listed on a plethora of exchanges. Huobi, Binance, OKEx, Digifinex, Upbit, the list goes on. Volume seems to be evenly distributed, although Huobi appears to have the healthiest order books. On these books, there is a decent turnover and hence strong liquidity for easy IOST execution. Once you've bought your tokens, then you're going to want to store them in an offline wallet. Which wallet you use will depend on the type of token that you hold. If you have the ERC20 type, then any wallet that supports Ethereum will do, including hardware wallets. 
However, if you convert it to the native token, then you have a much more limited selection. Check the description box below for a list of the wallets that you can use. So to summarize everything, here's my quick take. IOST does sound appealing. Scalability is a big concern in the blockchain ecosystem and the IOST approach could provide a much needed breath of fresh air. I also think that the project has some impressive team members behind it all while being backed by deep pocketed VC funds. Development is moving forward at a steady pace and the mainnet launch brought renewed interest to the project. Now, having said all of that, there are a number of competing blockchains with similar MOs. On the DAP development side, they have the likes of Ethereum, LISC, EOS, etc. You also have projects such as Silica that have their own innovative sharding based approaches to scaling. So it'll be interesting to see whether IOST can adequately differentiate themselves from the pack as they continue to roll out their mainnet. And that's it, my overview of IOST. But what do you think of the project? Are you a fan of it or is there another project that you're backing? Let me know in the comments. And of course, if this video was helpful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for much more from the Bureau. Thank you.